1967, Paul Newman introduced moviegoers to Lucas Jackson, a rebellious man who becomes a hero to his fellow prison camp members for his fearlessness in the classic movie Cool Hand Luke. The film was directed by Stuart Rosenberg, and it starred Paul Newman and George Kennedy with a cast of great characters that you recognize. Newman's character of Luke Jackson is arrested for cutting the tops off of rows of parking meters while he was on a drunken spree in a small southern town. He's then sentenced to two years of labor on a chain gang. He's a loner who maintains his aloofness even while working in the blazing sun. Pretty soon, Luke antagonizes another prisoner called Dragline, who's the acknowledged leader of the chain gang. The tension between these two continues to mount until they finally fight it out, in which Dragline beats Luke, but he's unable to make him give up. Luke's skill at poker, plus his refusal to break under pressure from the sadistic guards, ends up winning him the respect of Dragline and the admiration of the other inmates. After a short time, he receives a farewell visit from his dying mother, and shortly after, he receives a telegram informing him that she has died. Unable to bear the confinement that he's in, he saws a hole in the floor under his bunk and escapes. But he's captured, brutally beaten, and put in ankle chains. Undaunted by this, he breaks out again and is recaptured again. Every effort is made to break his will. He is bludgeoned and overworked until he begs the guards for mercy. Upon seeing Luke give in to the guards, he slides from being the hero that they had cast him as down to a man that they had contempt for. Then without warning, he escapes in a dump truck, followed by Dragline. They take refuge in a church. Luke sends Dragline away and attempts to settle his score with God. Partly out of love for Luke, and partly out of fear for his own safety, Dragline returns with the guards. Rather than surrender, Luke stands before a window and shouts his defiance until he is silenced by a bullet. The hysterical Dragline is beaten into submission and then returns to the chain gang, where he goes on to perpetuate the legend of Cool Hand Luke. The story was written by an ex-con. While he was in the Merchant Marine, Don Pierce was caught counterfeiting money and thrown into a French prison. He escaped, returned to the U.S., and became a safecracker. A waitress ratted him out, and he spent two years on a prison road gang where he heard about Luke Jackson, someone who was an excellent poker player, a banjo expert, and who had once eaten 50 boiled eggs for a bet. He wrote about him in his book, Cool Hand Luke, which was published in 1965. He went on to sell the movie rights to Warner Brothers for $80,000, and he also got an additional $15,000 to write the screenplay. But this was his first opportunity to write a screenplay, and he wasn't very good at it. At one point, they ended up bringing in Frank Pearson to rework the drafts that he had originally done. He appears in the movie as the convict sailor, and he was the production's technical advisor, too. Jack Lemmon's production company, J. Lum Productions, produced the movie, so he had first dibs on playing the lead role, but he recognized that he wasn't right for the part at all. They then tried to cast Telly Savalas, but he was in Europe filming The Dirty Dozen, so the production had to look elsewhere for the starring role to get the film underway. The movie was set in Florida, but was filmed in Stockton, California. The production crew went to an actual prison in Florida, took photographs and measurements so that they could rebuild that same scene in Stockton. They built dozens of buildings, including barracks, mess halls, and guardhouses. They shipped in a boatload of Spanish moss from Louisiana to hang from the trees. Now, the director had some pretty strict rules while they were on the set. He wouldn't allow any of the actors' wives to visit them while they were on the set. 
He wanted to get the men to really feel that they were truly members of a chain gang. So he banned women from the set. Even Joy Harmon, who played Lucille, who is the blonde that's responsible for driving the guys crazy during the car wash scene, was kept away from the cast too. She had to stay in a hotel all alone for two days before she shot the car wash scene. And she had no idea how suggestive the scene was until she eventually saw it in the theater. She went on to say that she felt a little bit embarrassed when she saw it at the premiere. Originally, the scene where Paul Newman plays Plastic Jesus as an ode to his mother was scheduled for the beginning of the shoot, but after he insisted on learning how to play the instrument, the director delayed that shoot for a few weeks. When they tried it, and the playing that he did was unsatisfactory, It was bumped up until the next to the last day of production. The director and Newman had a shouting match over this because Newman just couldn't get it right. Eventually, they got a cut that they could use, which I think is perfect for the film. The opening scenes of the movie, which leads you to believe that this is going to be a great film, show Paul Newman cutting off the heads of the parking meters. All that was filmed in Lodi, California. After filming was complete, the city didn't replace those meters. And for many years afterwards, you could actually go there and see a block-long row of metal posts without meters. The scene where Luke is visited by his mother needed to be filmed in only one day. Given that that scene had eight dialogue-filled pages, that was quite the tall order. But because of the two cast members that were involved, Paul Newman and Joe Van Fleet, were stage-trained professionals, all of this went off without a hitch, and they got it completed on schedule. The fight scene between Dragline and Luke took three days to shoot. George Kennedy said that they were both completely worn out from all the fighting. Now, one of the most iconic lines in the movie is the phrase, What we've got here is a failure to communicate. This was voted as the number 11 movie quote by the American Film Institute. Now Morgan Woodward, who played Boss Godfrey, known as the man with no eyes, played his character so well that he intimidated a lot of the other cast members. He never broke character during breaks during the filming. He would sit back in his chair, still wearing his mirrored sunglasses, and not speak to anyone. He created a distance between the guards and the actors or inmates. And that wasn't the end of it. This was so effective, having these mirrored glasses, that the famous Stanford prison experiment used the same tactic when it was done at Stanford University in 1971. This was a two-week simulation about the prison environment so that they could see the psychological effects of becoming a prisoner or a guard would have on these two sets of people. This experiment has been highly criticized, but what I find extremely interesting is the use of the Cool Hand Luke sunglasses to separate the class of individuals in both the experiment and the movie. With the death of Morgan Woodward in February of 2019, Lou Antonio is the sole surviving cast member from this great classic movie. If you haven't seen Cool Hand Luke in a while, take the time to watch it. It's one that you can watch over and over again and never get tired of it. I consider it one of the best films ever made and certainly one of my favorite. Thank you so much for watching and we'll continue to chase the classics.